So, uh, peace and blessings. Happy New Year. Remember I told y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all that for the first month, every time I come on the camera. So, I originally came, pull up the camera because I wanted to talk to y'all about um, things I've learned in the 17 years of me having locks. But then, as I'm driving to go get my oil change, which, by the way, I gave the guys a $20 tip because it's one of those oil changes that you drive up and you sit in the car while they do it for you. And the car is running more smoother. I need to take care of my baby. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so I gave them a $20 tip. God is good because when you got it, I mean, the key is to give, right? Um and I gave them the tip and all of them got super excited. They were super happy. Each one of them came to me and said, thank you so much. And they was like, they called me Shauna. I let them rock. Um, they were like, uh, oh, Shauna's buying us lunch. I was just like, I felt good that I was able to put a smile on their face because they did such an amazing job for me and they gave me discounts. So like, why not? Anyways. The reason I didn't come on the, the camera for that, but the reason why I came on the camera is to talk to you guys about the lessons that I've learned in the 17 years of having locks. The problem that stopped me with my mission for this video is the fact that I live in Dallas, Texas. If you guys don't know, I moved here a year ago from Brooklyn. Gang gang squad, right? <laughs> And I'm sitting here driving up to the oil, the oil change place, and I see these white speckles falling from the sky. So I'm like, yo, what they got on top of they, they roof? Like, they roof need cleaning. Sis, they ain't got nothing on they roof. It's snowing. Let me tell you how the devil is a liar, and I'm not about to play with him. I'm in Dallas, Texas. What you talking about snow? Snow where? Huh? Am I in New York? Help me figure it out. <laughs> but anyways, let's get back to the video at hand. Before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We got a goal this year, y'all. We got a goal to get out of the 11K. That's what our goal is. Low key, I can tell y'all what the goal is for 2020. The goal is to get to 30K tiger lily squad members that is what the goal is do y'all think that goal is manageable if you think it is give me some tips and tricks as to how your girl essence of shay can get to 30k um tiger lily squad members so let's get into the video so the first thing i've learned um in my years of having locks uh, is beeswax is not your friend. Listen, I didn't know too much about locks and I figured a lot of people were using beeswax from what I was seeing. Um, it wasn't that popping in YouTube to like watch a video. So you would ax around the neighborhood and people were talking about they use beeswax to start their hair. So that's what I went and did. But the problem with that is it's wax. This is a lock. It's not like your normal hair that you could just do a wash and go and if you want to put it in it, uh, you can wash it out the next time you wash your hair. No, this gets seeped into your lock. So where is it going, which causes dandruff? I mean, not dandruff, which causes buildup, which causes your hair to thin. So the, one, the number one thing I've learned is not to use beeswax. Another thing that I've learned is to not manipulate your hair so much like i used to retwist my hair and style my hair literally every two weeks every two weeks because you was not about to catch me slipping looking like boo boo the goddamn fool out in these streets you was not about to do that like shay had a reputation mm -hmm. mm. so but i noticed that that caused my roots to get very weak like I've always had thick hair 
you know what I mean? Like, I would be the person that you do my hair and I would fall asleep. Like, it was therapeutic. But it got to a point where my scalp got just got really sensitive. Um, my roots were getting thin. The shaft of my lock was getting thin because of that tight manipulation that I kept doing in my hair. And it wasn't even necessary. The number third thing that I've learned to moisturize my hair on a consistent basis. Consistent basis. I used to like say, listen, if it don't feel dry, um, if it don't feel dry, if it don't look dry, then it's fine. That don't mean nothing, sis. That don't mean, that's like a tree. And I, I tell y'all this all the time with my tree example, right? A tree or a plant, after a while, you start to see the damages that are caused when you are not taking care of it. Is that not correct? So my thing is that's what your locks. You might not realize it in like after like for a couple months when you're just like sporadically you'll spray something in your hair and then sporadically you'll add a little bit of oil to it but after a couple of months your hair realizes that listen she's not taking care of me like he's not doing what he's supposed to do obviously he don't care about me so what am i gonna do i'm gonna be rebel i'm gonna act out i'm gonna act like i ain't got no goddamn sense and i'm gonna get dry i'm gonna get very brittle i'm gonna start shedding a lot shoot you might even break off moisturize your hair is key and that's another reason why my hair got so thin um because you guys if you guys have followed me for a while you know that this my hair was way thicker than this like way thicker than this and this was all because a learning process and it was because i just didn't moisturize my hair as much as I was supposed to do. And you guys know oils do not moisturize your hair. You need a water soluble um, to do that and then you use the oil as a sealant. Or you could just use the water soluble mixed with a little bit of oil and that could be your thing and keep it moving. But you have to moisturize your hair. It is a key necessity. Listen, you could go a whole year without retwisting, styling, coloring, whatever to your hair, but you have to moisturize the dome. It's as simple as that. My fourth tip is when coloring your hair, make sure you wash out all the all the color because you may think that you didn't. And then the next day you go, the next time you go wash your hair, you see that color still, like the water looks like the color in your hair. Um, then your hair is breaking, like it's getting thinner. The shaft is getting thinner. This is what happened and your hair is getting weak. This is what happened with me. I thought that I washed out all the color out of my locks, but a lot of times, even recently, where I thought I washed out all the color and I didn't. A key that I know now too is that the color, you guys know I rock hard for Crema Nature -y. Rock hard -y. Um, But when I color my hair with them, a thing that I noticed too, that I did notice in the past, but like I was just too lazy to go back in the shower, but it damaged my hair, was that I could smell it. Like there were little scents um like the strong ammonia smell but it wasn't od that i couldn't live my life but if i took my hair and i put it up to my face i could smell the scent so i knew that it was still even if it was a little bit it was still in my hair which is probably gonna cause my stuff to get paper thin so what did i do i went back and washed it out this is recently but before i would never do that like i'm not about to um i'm not about to be going back and forth 
And girl, oh, I thought she was honking at me. I'm about to say, sis, I'm not even in your way. Like, tech way yourself. What? People just be honking their horn just to honk it. I feel. I feel like. I know. In their head, they'd be like, yo, it's too quiet. Let me make some noise in this place. Back to what I was saying. Um, wash out. If you're going to go color your hair yourself, make sure you wash it out thoroughly. Another lesson I learned about dyes is semi-permanent dyes get everywhere. They are not for me. You understand? They're not for me. I can't rock with them. They get on my clothes. They get on my pillowcase. They get. I don't understand it. Even if they say to wash it out all the way, my thing is like I went through all of this now to wash it out completely, and then it's not even as prominent in the color. So I just wasted a good three hours. I'm not even about to play with semi permanent dye. Y'all can have it. It ain't for me. Sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, last lesson I learned, this is my fifth lesson I learned, is the way that you started to retwist your lock in the beginning. Like the direction that you started is the direction that you should continue to go. So I, I don't remember how I started, which direction I went, but I know throughout the course of the years, I haven't stayed in that original um, pattern, which I can tell because like, for instance, the back of my locks, the back of my head, my locks are thin. Like they are very thin in the back. Um, they're, they're, to me, they're, th yeah, you could tell that's thin. I don't like that. Um, so I've learned that the direction that you start off is where you should stay because going back and yo fam it's snowing for real i'm not about to play with dallas like i'm really not about to play with dallas you should not go uh, against what you started because it will cause your locks to get thin so those are my top five tips of what I learned in my 17 years of having locks. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in your journey, whether it's one year, two years, three years, six months, 20 years, whatever it is, darlings. Let me know what you learned so far in your lock journey. I'm not coming out of this parking lot so you could get from behind my car. Thank you so much. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please go to my store, www.essenceofshade.com. It's all things locks. It's your one-stop shop to locks and self-love in all that jazz. Okay? See you later, Tiger Lilies. I can't even... See you later, Tiger Lilies. See ya. Too. I thought I was joking. Uh, crash course. Let me hide the money in the dashboard. Max mad, could you lost the brick inside the porch? Goofy with the curve, then asking me for intercourse.